assistant professor uh, information technology department ksyu mysore i will going to handle uh, computer fundamentals which is a generic elective for uh, ug students so now i will going to explain uh, unit 1 fundamentals of uh, computers uh, nowadays uh, in each and every field we will going to use uh, computers you also knows very well about uh, computers i think so computers have some more remarkable features which have made them so popular so these features are basically the regions for which the computers were originally built these features are so we have some features of computers uh, automatic speed accuracy versatility diligence large memory so we can store uh, number number of files and uh, use data we can store automatic the computers are automatic machines in in the sense that once started on a job they carry on until the job is finished so once the job is started automatically computers will going to work on that particular job until job is finished normally without any users help once we have assigned the job means it will do it until finished speed the computers can work at enormously high speeds they are capable of taking logical decisions performing arithmetic and uh, non-arithmetic operations on alphabets and uh, copying at unbelievable unbelievable speed while talking about uh, the speed of computer we do not talk uh, in terms of seconds or even milliseconds for a computer the units of speed are microseconds that is 10 to the power of minus 6 nanoseconds 10 to the power of minus 9 and even picoseconds 10 to the power of minus 12 a powerful computer can perform 3 to 4 million simple arithmetic operations per second understand so computer can perform 3 to 4 million simple arithmetic operations per second accuracy the computers produce highly accurate and reliable results okay the results are very accurate and versatility a computer is capable of performing a wide variety of functions diligence a computer is capable of performing the same task over and over again with the same degree of accuracy and reliability as the first one this is because unlike human beings a computer is free from monotony tiredness lack of concentration etc okay so in case of computers there is no tiredness and monotony hence work can hence can work for hours together without creating errors next one is large memory our ability to acquire and retain knowledge is limited but this is not the case with computers a computer can store and recall any amount of information because of its secondary storage capability so in computers we will be having secondary storage devices we have large data means we can store it on the secondary storage even after several years the information recalled will be accurate as on the day when it was fed into the computer after a few years also we can fetch your data we have some applications of computers computers are not affecting every sphere of human activity and bringing about many changes in industry government education medicine scientific research law social sciences and even in arts like music and painting also so we'll be having applications of computers education we'll use banking airline and railway reservation medical uh, diagnosis weather forecasting cartoon film production space research information technology in these fields 
we are going to use the computers. Evolution of computers. How computers are evaluated? In 1945, Dr. John Von Neumann gave the idea of stored program computer in the sense that the program be stored in the main memory of the computer along with the, along with its associated data. EDVAC. EDVAC is nothing but electronic discrete variable automatic computer was the first stored computer. It was developed in 1952. The Britishers developed the EDSAC. EDSAC means electronic delay storage automatic computer. Almost uh, it is uh, simultaneously with EDVAC of USA. So next we will see about functional units of computer. Regardless of type and size, all computers follow the same four basic operations as shown in the figure here. Okay, we will be having input unit, central processing unit, storage unit, and output unit. Input unit. Input can be nearly any kind of data, letters, numbers, symbols, shapes, colors sounds etc information is entered into computer with the help of input devices some popular input devices are we have keyboard mouse joystick floppy and hard disk punctured cards optical mark reader in short the input unit performs the following functions it accepts or reads data and program set of instructions. It converts these instructions and data in computer acceptable form. It supplies the converted instructions and data for further processing. This is about input unit. Second one, storage unit. Storage unit is nothing but memory unit. The data you are going to store in the memory. The function of storage unit is to store the information or data. Storage is of two types, temporary, primary storage and permanent secondary storage. The storage unit performs the following functions. Okay, It stores the data and program, set of instructions. Program is nothing but set of instructions. It holds the intermediate results of processing. It stores final results of processing before they are passed on the output unit. Next, we'll see about central processing unit. CPU is the brain of computer. Its primary function is to execute programs. Besides executing programs, the CPU also controls the operation of all other components such as memory, input and output devices, the major sections of CPU, arithmetic logic unit, control unit. Next fourth one we will see about output unit. The output devices receive results and other information from the computer and provide them to the users. The computer sends information to an output device in the binary form. Some of the popular output units are visual display unit, printer, plotter, etc. In short, the following functions are performed by an output unit. It accepts the results produced by the computer which are in coded form. It converts these coded results to human acceptable form. It supplies the converted results to the outside world. This is about output unit. Next, we will see about generations and types of computer, which is an important question. First generation computers. So 1945 to 1958, the first business computer was developed in the year 1951. 
by the US Census Bureau. This computer was called a Universal Automatic Computer, that is a UNIVAC. The technology was based on the vacuum tubes. The computers that used vacuum tube circuits were called first generation computers. The vacuum tube circuits contained a filament that was heated to emit electrons. Some of the important features of this the generations are very and non-portable, bulky in size and occupied a lot of space. Magnetic core memories they have used in this and the low level languages were used in this. Okay, Processor speed measured in milliseconds. Input output operations were performed using punched cards. Main application areas were scientific computation record keeping, payroll processing, etc. Some of the important uh, computers of this generation were Z3, Mark 1, ENIAC, ADVAC, UNIVAC, UNIVAC, etc. So these are all uh, important computers of this generation. Next we will see about second generation. So second generation computers 1959 to 1964. Bell Labs of USA invented transistors that were used in place of vacuum tubes. Transistors are electronic circuits that are small in size and do not require any heating for emitting electrons. The computers that use transistors were called second generation computers. So here we have some uh, important features of this generation, smaller in size in comparison uh, with the previous generation and generated less heat. Internal storage capacity was increased and processor speed uh, measured in uh, microseconds. Magnetic core memories uh, as a primary storage. Machines started to evolve as series rather than standalone processors. Magnetic tapes were used for the secondary memory. High level languages like COBOL, Fortran were used. More reliable, less prone to errors. Some of the important computers of this generation were IBM 700, IBM 1401, ICL 1901, etc. Third generation computers. We have uh, third generation computers between 1965 and uh, 71. Integrated uh, uh, circuits replaced the transistors in this generation. An integrated circuit consists of thousands of transistors and other electronic components embedded on a silicon chip. The computers became faster and reliable. Some of the important features of this generation uh, uh, we have uh, like following. Mini computers were introduced. This generation saw the emergence of the software industry, introduction of uh, VDU, visual display unit, made input and output uh, operations uh, very simpler. Processor speeds uh, measured uh, in uh, nanoseconds. System software called operating system that controls the overall activities of the computer became common. Computers of this generation were using multi-programming concept, which allowed many programs to execute simultaneously. Disk used as a backing store medium, mostly used in order in order processing, airline is real-time inventory control systems. So in these fields, uh, we're going to use these computers. Some of the important uh, computers of this generation were IBM 360, NCR 395, and uh, Burroughs B6500, etc. Next, uh, fourth generation. It started in the year 1971 and present also fourth generation. Fourth generation uh, emerged uh, with the advent of uh, large scale and uh, very large scale uh, integration circuits. 
uh, large scale integration and very large scale integration that is VLSI disk. Reduced the size of computer with the increase in performance. Some of the important features of this generation are development of microprocessor based technology, use of semiconductor chips for uh, memory, microcomputers and personal computers uh, which were affordable were available to the common man. Graphic terminals began to appear. New set of software such as uh, database management systems and uh, spreadsheets were introduced in this. Use of data communication and uh, computer network became uh, common. This generation computers uh, were used in applications such as corporate modeling, decision support systems, electronic uh, fund transfer, small business applications, etc. So some of the important computers uh, of this uh, generation, uh, we have IBM PS2, Apple II, etc. Next, we'll see about fifth generation computers, present and future. Recent research has focused on developing thinking computers, that is artificial intelligence, AI, artificial intelligence. These computers are called the fifth generation computers and are developed in the laboratories of USA and Japan. These will have ULSI, ultra large scale integration technology with a sophisticated operating system interface capability. These computers uh, will have uh, KIPS, Knowledge Information Processing System. Some of the important features of this generation, uh, we have uh, introduction of uh, organic chips and uh, large storage capacity we are having in this fifth generation. High speed computers uh, such as uh, super computers were introduced, parallel processing, artificial intelligence, expert systems, Robotics, fifth generation computers are uh, used uh, in artificial intelligence, robotics, large scale corporate modeling, oil explorations, weather uh, system forecasting uh, modeling, etc. Some of the important computers of this generation, we have Cray2, Param. These are all uh, super computers. Classification of computers. Computers can be divided into different categories depend upon the size, efficiency, memory, and the number of users. Broadly, they can be classified according to the following criteria. Classification is based on their construction and working. Classification based on applications. And the third one, classification based on the size, speed, and capability. Now we'll see about classification based on their construction and working. Based on the operating system principles, computers can be classified as one of the following analog computers. These computers are used uh, to monitor continuously changing the signals. They contain analog devices and handle information which is of physical nature. Analog computers derive all their data for some form of measurement. They represent fractional and are irrational values exactly with no round off. This is about analog computers. Next, digital computers. These are uh, can uh, accept discrete data such as digits and other symbols, process and give output in a human readable form. For instance, uh, if you take a binary digital computer, it uses tau to discrete states such as positive, negative, high or low, on or off, used to represent the binary digits 0 or 1. It processes data which is essentially in a binary state. Next, the third one is hybrid computers. These computers use the principles of both analog and digital computers. Hybrid uh, computer is a Digital computer uh, that accepts analog signals, converts them to the digital and processes them in digital form. 
This integration is obtained by digital to analog and analog to digital converter. A hybrid computer may be analog data and produce analog or digital data. Classification based on applications. So our computers are available in different shapes, sizes and weights. Due to these different shapes and sizes, they perform different sorts of jobs from one another. A computer that is used in a home different in size and shape from the computer being used in a hospital. Computers act as server in large buildings being used in hospital. Computers act as a server in large building. General purpose computers. So these are designed to meet the needs of many different applications. In these computers, the instructions needed to perform a particular task are not wired permanently into the internal memory. Thus, new instructions can be loaded as and when required for processing. They can be used to prepare table, manage inventories, print sales, reports, etc. This is about general purpose computers. Next, we will see about special purpose computers. These computers are dedicated to cater the requirements of a particular task or application. These do not pos possess unnecessary options and thus cost less. Examples, com examples, computers that are built into high-end digital camera, automobile fuel, and ignition control, etc. Classification based on size, speed, and capability. Based on size, based on size, speed, and capability to handle volume of data, computers can be classified into one of the following types: supercomputers. You observe this uh, figure; it shows a supercomputer. Supercomputers are the fastest computers with extremely large storage capabilities and computing power. These are more powerful than mainframes and are ideal for computing applications that involve large volumes of data and uh, intensive computing. They can process up to a billion instructions per second. Supercomputers are used in scientific research such as weather forecast, cryptography, weapon research, medicine, etc. Examples of uh, supercomputers we have Cray 2, Param, etc. These are all the examples of supercomputers. And applications of supercomputers, we are going to use supercomputers in weather forecast, cryptography, weapon research, medicine, etc. Next to mainframe computers. You observe this figure. This figure shows mainframe computers. So these are general purpose, large scale, expensive machine with huge storage capacity. They are called mainframe because the system units, CPUs of these computers are usually housed in a compartment. They have very high processing speeds. Hundreds of users can simultaneously work on these systems. In a traditional mainframe environment, each user works at a, at a computer terminal. Mainframe usually employs multiple processors for processing data and a separate input and output processor to increase 
the throughput and uh, performance of the system. They are ideal for the transaction processing, financial applications, payroll, investment analysis, etc. They are capable of processing between 14 to 20 MIPS, million instructions per second, with computer word size exceeding 64 bits. Example of mainframe computers are IBM 370, Univac 1100, Vax 8000, etc. These are all the examples of mainframe computers. You observe this figure, it shows a mainframe environment. Next, mini computers. This figure shows it is a mini computer. The term mini computer was uh, originated. Uh, in 1960s when it was realized that many computing tasks do not require an expensive contemporary mainframe computers but can be solved by a small inexpensive computer most mini computers can handle multiple terminals thereby providing a mainframe like environment uh, at uh, low cost users. Many computers are employed for a number of business functions such as uh, processing royalties and uh, analyzing uh, market uh, data, etc. Examples of mini computers are IBM system, PDP 11. These are the examples for mini computers. You observe this figure, it shows a mini computer. Next, we will see about workstation. You observe this figure. This figure shows uh, it, is a, it is an example for workstation. Workstations lie somewhere between uh, mid range computers and PCs. These are uh, specialized single user computers with many of the features of a personal computer. But with the processing power of a mini computer, they can be used by individuals or by groups. Workstations typically use advanced processors with more primary and secondary storage capacity. They are equipped with large high resolution monitors and accelerated graphic processors to handle advanced design, modeling, animation and video editing. Workstations are heavily used by engineers, designers, architects, film industry, animators, and molecular modeling uh, simulators. Examples of workstations are SunSpark and HP 700 series, etc. These are all examples of workstations. You observe this figure. It shows workstation. Next, we'll see about microcomputers. These are low cost, slow machines built using microprocessors. Microcomputers are also known as personal computers. We'll call it as PCs, personal computers, and are designed for office and personal use. They are usually employed in word processing and uh, spreadsheet uh, application. The basic units of a PC are the system unit, video display terminal, that is a monitor, keyboard, and a mouse we have. So examples of this microcomputers are IBM PC, PS2, Apple II, and Macintosh etc. These are examples of the microcomputers. Next to laptops and notebooks. Laptops and notebooks are battery operated computers that can be used anywhere at any time. Primary differences between laptop and a notebook are size, and weight. Laptop computers are small enough to fit on the lap of a 
user and the notebook computer are even smaller than the laptops however both laptops and notebooks are equipped with powerful microprocessors powerful microprocessors have been used in this laptops and notebooks graphic capabilities adequate memory size and mouse driven input next observe this this is the example for the laptop this figure shows laptop handheld computers handheld computers are also called as palm tabs they are smaller than a notebook and can be easily operated on palm so these are three main categories of palm tabs that is pda personal digital assistant smartphone tablet pc personal digital assistant pdas are among the smallest of portable computers that are used for special applications such as taking notes displaying telephone numbers and addresses and keeping track of dates or agendas we be connected to large computer to exchange the data so this pdas are nothing but personal digital digital assistant you observe this figure it shows pda next smartphone everybody knows about the smartphones nowadays uh, our smartphone uh, we can use it as a computer okay growth in demand for advanced mobile devices boosting powerful processors abundant memory large screens and open operating systems has led to the invention of smartphones a smartphone is considered to be combination of the traditional pda and cellular phone with a bigger focus on the cellular phone part these handheld devices integrate mobile phone capabilities with the more common features of a handheld computer or pda smartphone allow the user to store information email to store these handheld devices these handheld devices integrate mobile phone just a minute so these handheld devices integrate mobile phone capabilities with more common features of a handheld computer or pd smartphones allow the user to store information email install programs along with uh, using a mobile phone in one device so this is about smartphone you observe this next one is tablet pc you observe this figure it shows tablet pc a tablet pc is cross between a notebook pc and a handheld computer so it is a flat panel portable pc in a form of a slate it allows the user enter information by writing on the screen with a stylus or electronic we can use the electronic pen can be directly used on the screen just as like a mouse to do things like uh, select drag and open files it can be used in a place of a keyboard to hand 
write notes and communications. Unlike a touch screen, the tablet PC screen only receives information from this pen. So this is about different types of computers. Now we will see about data information and data processing. <coughs> data consists of individual facts or pieces of information that by themselves may not make much sense to a person. A computer's primary job is to process these tiny pieces of data in various ways, converting them into useful information. Data is distinct pieces of information, usually formatted in a special way. All software is divided into two general categories, that is data and programs. Programs are nothing but collection of instructions for manipulating data. <coughs> information in its most restricted technical sense is a sequence of symbols that can be interpreted as a message. Information can be recorded as signs or transmitted as signals. Information is any kind of event that affects the state of a dynamic system that can interpret the information. Data processing is the collection and manipulation of items of data to produce meaningful information. In this sense, it can be considered a subset of information processing. The change or processing of information in any manner detectable by an observer. The term is often used more specifically in the context of a business or other organization to refer to the class of commercial data processing applications. So data processing may involve various processes including conversion that is uh, converting data to another format validation validation means so uh, ensuring that the supplied data is uh, clean correct and useful or not sorting sorting is nothing but uh, arranging uh, items uh, in some uh, sequence uh, and uh, are in different uh, sets summarization Reducing uh, detailed data to its uh, main points, that is called uh, summarization, aggregation, combining multiple pieces of data, analysis, the collection, organization, analysis, interpretation, and presentation of the data, reporting. Reporting is nothing but uh, list detail or uh, summary data or computed information. Evolution of data processing. Manual data processing, automatic data processing, and electronic data processing. Types of data processing. Types of data processing based on application areas can be classified as scientific data processing, commercial data processing. Scientific data processing. Scientific data processing usually involves uh, a great deal of uh, computation, arithmetic uh, and uh, comparison operations upon a relatively small amount of input data resulting in a small volume of output. Commercial data processing involves a lower volume of input data, relatively few computational operations and a large volume of uh, output accounting uh, programs are the prototypical examples of uh, data processing applications. Uh, IS, that is information systems, is the field that studies such organizational computer systems. Types of data processing based on service areas can be classified as transaction processing, it is a style of computing uh, that uh, divides work into individual, indivisible operations called transactions. A transaction processing system TPS or transaction server is a software system or software hardware combination 
that supports transaction processing information storage and or retrieval systems information storage and retrieval is the systematic process of uh, collecting and uh, catalog data so that they can be located and displayed on the request computers and data processing techniques have made possible the high speed selective retrieval of large amounts of uh, information for government commercial and uh, and academic purposes there are several basic types of information storage and retrieval systems next document retrieval systems store entire documents which are usually retrieved by title or by keywords associated with the document in some systems the text documents is stored as data next uh, database systems so in database systems we can store the information as a series of discrete records that are in turn divided into discrete fields examples are nothing but name address and phone number records can be searched and retrieved on the basis of the content of the fields for example all people who have a particular telephone area code the data are stored within the computer either in main storage or auxiliary storage for ready access this is about database systems next one reference retrieval systems store references to documents rather than the documents themselves such systems in response to a search request provide the titles of relevant documents and frequently their physical locations such systems are efficient when large amounts of different types of printed data must be stored they have proven extremely effective in libraries where material is constantly changing this is about reference retrieval systems next command and control systems a system is a device or set of devices that manages commands directs or regulates the behavior of the other devices or systems this is about command and control systems computing service systems a computing a system that contains computing facilities and personnel to support the computing service it plans implements operates and supports centrally owned or administered computing resources computing service systems next one is process control systems process control is extensively used in industry and enables mass production of continuous processes such as oil refining paper manufacturing chemicals power plants and many other industries process control enables automation with which a small <coughs> staff of operating personnel can operate a complex process from a central control room this is about process control system next message switching systems message switch switching systems are nowadays mostly implemented over packet switched or data networks each message is treated as a separate entity in this we will going to treat each message as a separate entity and each message contains addressing information and at each switch this information is read and the transfer path to the next switch is decided so this is about uh, message uh, switch systems in the video course share it close mat bidla wait a minute wait a minute
okay my dear students sorry for the interruption so now i'm going to start uh, unit 2 unit 2 is about uh, input and output devices i have already explained about all the input devices uh, we have okay the main input device is uh, keyboard so an input device is any peripheral that is used to provide data and control signals to a computer input and output devices act as software interface software uh, input and output devices act as hardware interface between a computer and a human input devices are classified according to the modality of input example of mechanical uh, motion audio visual etc type of input such as a discrete for example a key process or continuous with the help of mouse movement the number of degrees of freedom involved example two dimensional traditional mice or three dimensional navigators designed for cad applications some of the important input devices we have keyboard mouse trackball joystick light pen scanner touch panel digital camera and smart card this is about input devices and we have output devices a peripheral device that receives and are displays the output from a computer is called as an output device it is used to communicate the results of processing to the outside world most commonly used output devices are monitor printer and a speaker output by a computer is classified into two categories soft copy and hard copy soft copy means it is an electronic version of the output document it is usually viewed through a word processing system the advantage of digital soft copy is that it is easy to edit a soft copy and multiple copies of the same document can easily be produced and we can we want to send means we can send through email hard copy hard copy is the printed form of a computer output it is also referred to as a printer a hard copy is so called because it exists as a physical form printers a printer is an output device that produces text and graphics on a physical medium such as on the paper since the printed information exists permanently on a physical media they are called as hard copy impact printers this is example of the printers impact printers an impact pr printer forms characters and graphics on a piece of paper by striking an inked ribbon against the paper with a hammer like mechanism this is the working principle of the impact printer examples include dot matrix printers line printers etc and we have advantages of impact printers also by using carbon paper multiple copies of the output can be taken at once they can normally withstand dusty environment vibrations and extreme temperatures they can print on any type of paper and printing cost is comparatively low some of the disadvantages also we have of this impact printers they are generally noisy because of striking activities they cannot be used to print uh, transparencies like uh, vinyl sheets fabric or uh, butter paper their speed is low compared uh, to non impact printers non impact printers okay non impact printers uh, forms uh, characters and uh, graphics on a piece of paper without actually striking the paper examples include inkjet printer thermal printer laser printer these are all the examples of the non impact printers some of the advantages of non impact printer 
since there is no striking mechanism they make uh, less noise they produce uh, high quality printouts as compared to impact printers they possess high printing rate they can be used to print on variety of surfaces such as sheets also fabric and butter paper also we have some disadvantages of this non impact printers the printing cost per page is uh, more and are usually sensitive machines and they cannot withstand harsh conditions so this is about uh, printers in wages and the output device so next class so i will to discuss about uh, unit 3 that is a memory concept just a minute so in this block one uh, i have explained about uh, unit one fundamentals of it and uh, unit two input and output devices so unit three memory concepts so uh, we'll see in the uh, next class so keyboard uh, contains uh, keys and allow a user to enter data into the computer so the main input device is keyboard and uh, mouse mouse is the most widely used uh, <coughs> pointing device with a graphical user uh, interface environment on a personal computers and uh, track ball this is also one kind of input device and a uh, touch pad also touch screen joystick barcode reader these are all the examples of for some input devices magnetic ink character reader image scanner graphics tablet optical mark recognition these are all some more examples of this input devices and even digital camera also digital camera takes pictures and stores the images digitally light pen a light pen is a pointing device that can detect uh, the presence of the light by pointing a light pen at the computer's screen handwriting recognition okay a handwriting recognition is a technique which allows a computer system to recognize the characters and other symbols written by hand and the monitor is the main uh, output device visual display unit and different types of monitors we have that is crt crt is nothing but uh, cathode ray tube uses the same technology as used in the television uh, tvs liquid uh, display unit that is lcd liquid crystal display 
TFT, thin film transistor. These are all uh, about uh, monitors, printers. Printer is uh, one of the important output device. So we have seen about impact printers, non-impact printers, and examples, dot matrix printers, and advantages of a dot matrix printer, and disadvantages of a dot matrix printer, and in inkjet printers. And uh, we have laser printers also. A laser printer is a non-impact printer. And advantage of this laser uh, printer is the main advantage of the laser printer. Speed is high, pressure and economy. Laser printer uh, toner uh, powder is uh, cheap compared to inkjet printer cartridge. And we have plotters. A plotter is a printer that uses one or more automated pens to draw graphical images on a paper. So this is about uh, unit one and uh, unit two. So next class, I'm going to take uh, unit uh, three, memory concepts. So if you need any old question papers means, you can check in the KSOU student app. You'll find uh, some old question papers. Okay. Most of the questions uh, will going to repeat this semester also. You refer uh, old question papers. Okay. Thank you.